Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How are you all doing? It is a great privilege once again to come together like this, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It, uh, due to some uh, technical reasons, we could not uh, stream this uh, program yesterday. Hallelujah. Uh, I regret for that. Yeah, anyway, praise God. God has his own uh, ways, isn't it? I mean, he is never late or he is never too early. He is on time. I mean, whatever the Lord has installed for us this afternoon, He is going to deliver us this afternoon. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I praise God. He's, he has been so good to us. I mean, wherever we are scattered, God has kept us safe and sound. He has uh, fulfilled His promises. I mean, hallelujah. Today, whatever we are, it is only by His grace and mercy, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really thank and praise the Lord for uh, giving us this privilege. To come to you like this uh, in this manner to share the word of God and to keep in touch with one another I mean hallelujah and I pray whatever the prayer request that you have dear brothers and sisters please uh, let us know so that uh, we can uphold you in in, in the prayer I mean hallelujah now let's uh, close our eyes look to the Lord for his uh, help and guidance and uh, may the Lord speak to us uh, to uh, today I mean Whatever he has installed for us, the heavenly manna, let it uh, come to us. Let us close our eyes and uh, prepare our hearts and look to the Lord for his help and guidance. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this day that you have given to us, O God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it, O Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings, O God. You have been uh, so good to us, so faithful, O God. Lord, as your word says, your faithfulness endures forever, O God. Yes, Master, your faithfulness we have endured all these years and days, O Father God. Thank you. Once again, you have brought us together uh, into your presence, O God. Even as this streaming is going on, Lord, I pray that whosoever is watching this program, Lord, I pray, fill them with your anointing, O God. Fill them with your presence, O God. Let them know that you are there, O Father God. Let them know that you have a purpose in their lives, O God. Let none of us, O God, live without a purpose, O Master. Hallelujah. Thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, at this time I pray and I commit this entire program into the throne of your grace. Lead us and guide us, O God. Let your mighty hand be upon this, O Father God. Bless this media, O God, so that many more will be blessed and and encouraged, O God. As we are in these days of pandemic and in the last in these days of last days of your second coming, O Father God. Lord, prepare us, O Father God. Lord, prune us, O God. Correct us, O Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, make us, O God, so that we may be formed into your image of God. Each one of us uh, we may be found in you Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you and we praise you once again for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us O God. Yes Lord. Today whatever we are it is only by your grace and mercy Master. Blessed be your name O God. Thank you Lord God. Humbling ourselves and exalting your name O God. Especially hide your servant behind your cross O God. And uh, even as he is going to share your word, O God, break the bread of life, O Father God. Give us the grace to have undivided attention upon your word, O Father God. Let your word have a lasting impact in our lives, O Father God. Lord, I pray the seed as it is sown, O Lord God, let it bring forth hundredfolds for your glory, God. Let not your word return wide, O Master, hallelujah, but let it accomplish for the purpose that it has been sent forth, O Master. Blessed be your name. Thank you and we praise you. Giving you glory, honor, power and praises. We ask in the mighty and matchless and the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. My dear brothers and sisters, today uh, as Pastor Anil is going to share the word of God, let us uh, listen very attentively and uh, you know, learn from the word of God and be mature in the word of God. Hallelujah. His topic is uh, the purpose of our God. I mean, each one of us in this world have a purpose. I mean, praise God. It is up to us to know and to pursue the purpose of God. I mean, the, per the person who doesn't have a purpose, he will be useless. I mean, he is like a, you know, broken kite you know, just gone away in the wind. Let not our lives be like that. 
Hallelujah. God has a plan and He has a purpose. Let His purpose be fulfilled in our lives. I mean, look into the word of God, dear friends. Every man of God, every woman of God who was caught by the Lord, who was seen by the Lord, who was picked up by the Lord, I mean, they knew the purpose of God. They knew for what they have been chosen and uh, they worked out in that way. I mean, many times the things that uh, happens to us seems that we are out of the way. But let me tell you, prayerfully when you seek the presence of God, prayerfully when you seek the guidance of God, and let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will reveal everything what the purpose of God and how you need to uh, go about it. Hallelujah. Today, let us uh, concentrate. Let us give a little time to the Lord. I mean, may the Lord to speak to us. May the Holy Spirit prompt in our hearts. I mean, so that we can pursue the plan of God in our lives. I mean, hallelujah. Now, rest of the time, I give it to uh, Pastor Anil and he is going to share the word of God. God bless you. I mean. Shalom, peace. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God for this wonderful time and the opportunity that God has given to me once again to come to you with the word of the Lord. I pray that everyone is fine, doing fine, and things are going on well with you. And as this week, this is the word that the Lord has put upon my heart. That's what I'm going to share with you. So, let's begin. Let's read for today's meditation the scripture in the Second Timothy chapter one and verse nine. Second Timothy chapter one and verse nine. Paul says, "Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according." to his own purpose and grace which which was given us in Christ Jesus before the time began before the time began shall we turn to the lord in prayer glorious heavenly father we just want to thank and praise and glorify your name thank you lord for this wonderful time and the opportunity that you given to us mas god thank you lord for your word thank you lord for your presence we just want to give glory to your name especially mas god your word is bread of life unto us all lord the very verse which is right for us today we bring it back unto you lord and this is today's bread for us we bring it back unto you lord you bless it break it multiply and give it unto us mas god give us a grace o lord to feed our souls on your word mas god and lord let it be glorified mas god speak to us edify us encourage us boost our faith mas god and lord let it be glorified mas god Let your name be glorified in and through us, Master. Speak to us, Lord, not what we want, but Lord, what you want us to know, Lord. This week, you speak to us, and Lord, let you be glorified, Master. Hide me behind your cross. Let not me, but you speak to me, and in and through me to every one of us. Especially, I pray, Master, Hallelujah, Lord, for all these gadgets, Master. Bless them and let it work. Let everything work at its zero effect in the name of Jesus Christ, our Master. Your Father, God, I pray, Master God, let it work at a zero effect in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and so shall be. And Lord, let it be glorified, Lord. Thank you, Master God, giving you glory in Jesus' precious name. I pray, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When we just see now, when we talk with the people, when you hear the conversation of different people, and and especially these days, even from the, from quite my young age i have been listening to the people saying i do not know what is the purpose of my life why i am in this world what for i am in this world what is the purpose of my life i do not know i am just like that just i am born as a, any other child is born i am just born i am just growing and as as usual the, as the world goes i am going to the school and so on and so forth i but i to be honest and to, to tell you the truth i do not know what is the purpose of my life and I'm sure many of you have heard it. We, more of most of us, we have heard it. That what the, the standing comedians, what do they say? I am the result of my parents' mistake. 
I am the result of my parents' mistake. They say uh, out of joke, but they express, I do not know what is the purpose. I am born to the parents. I didn't even, if I would have given choice, I would not have born to the, my parents to whom I have now. The religion in which I am born, I, I don't know. It's not my, uh, it's not my, my, my purpose. I, I don't know. It is just happened to me. And so on and so forth. People give their uh, answers. People give their, their opinions. But today I would like to ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, beloved children of Almighty God, do you know the, what is the purpose of your life? Why are you in this world? Do you know about it? If you know it, praise God for that. But if you do not know, I urge my brothers and my sisters, beloved children of Almighty God, it's time, it's high time that you and I, we need to find out what is the purpose of our life. Are, are we purposeless? Are we just like that? As I said it earlier, many they say, I'm just, I'm good for nothing. Is it so? I'm purposeless, I'm useless, and so on and so forth. But I want to draw your attention today, my dear brothers and sisters. The very scripture that we have read it today, it's a second Timothy. Paul is writing to Timothy and he says, and he compares himself and uh, Timothy, he says that who has saved us, he has saved us and called us with the holy calling. God has called us with the holy calling, uh, a holy calling, not according to our works, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. His own purpose means God's Lord, Lord God Almighty, his purpose, Lord Jesus' purpose, according to his purpose. So, my dear brothers and sisters, right in the beginning, I want to tell you, let it, make it sure, make, be assured that your life has got a purpose. You may not have purpose or uh, your, your parents may not have purpose for your life, but God Almighty, God, He has a purpose for your life. You are on this earth or you are on the face of the earth, not purposeless, but you are with a specific purpose. You are with a purpose, a specific job, a specific task by God, which is appointed for you. And that task, that purpose, only you can perform, uh, fulfill, nobody else can do it. Because God has sent you in this world with a purpose. And that purpose, he has got and he will get it done. So, be rest assured, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that you are not purposeless. You are not in this world without any purpose or without any cause. You are here on this face of the world. At this, this time, at this particular time, you are with a purpose. You are not come early, you are not, you are not late, but you are on the right time, in the right place you are. Perhaps now, you might say to me, you know, you, uh, you, you, you have read the scripture that Paul is talking to Timothy and he is exhorting Timothy and saying that you, we are called by God. And what is, and that's an amazing thing, uh, what he is talking about, that he has called us according to his purpose, not according to our work, our according to our ability. So now, I want to talk to the people, especially those who are the believers in the Lord Jesus. And many of them, the, many of us, we say that, oh, I'm good for nothing. I have no talent. I don't have any, I, I don't have any talent. I don't have any gift. I can't sing. I can do, I, I can play any music. I can preach. I can't do anything. I can't pray properly. I can't do anything properly. There's nothing, nothing. I'm useless. I'm good for nothing. Not only that, but I have messed up my life. I have messed up in my family, I have messed up, I have messed up with my parents, I have messed up with my uh, uh, siblings, I have messed up with my, in my school, with my classmates and my uh, uh, friends, I have messed up with, in my workplace, with my colleagues, I have messed up with my um, you know, business partners and so on and so forth. So I'm good for nothing. And there is nothing good, I have no, no talents, there is nothing in me. So how can I be used and how can, how can you say that, that, that God has got a purpose for my life? There is nothing good. Everywhere I am messed up. And I don't have any talent, I don't have anything, any good in me. By which you can say that I am called or God has a purpose for my life. My dear brothers and sisters, Fasten your seatbelts and listen to the word of the Lord. 
what the Lord has to say for you. Those who say that I am purposeless, I am good for nothing. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have read the scripture, as Paul was talking to Timothy, so so today is Lord is speaking to you and me. Not according to your works, not according to your good deeds, not according to mm, the talents and abilities and the wisdom and knowledge that you have. God has chosen you, but He had chosen you before even there was no glimpse of your being on earth. That time He has purposed for your life, and that time He had chosen you and me. So it's not, it doesn't depend on you. Perhaps you may be, even right now, what, why you are listening to me, but perhaps right now your life is in a mess. You are messed up everywhere and everything. But today, it's a good news for you. The Lord is saying to you, you have a purpose. No matter what kind of mess that you have made with your life, in your family, in your workplace, with your spouse, with your parents, with your children. My dear brothers and sisters, not according to your deeds, God has purposed for your life, but he has purposed you before the foundation of the world. That's what we read again in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Before the foundation of the world, he has chosen us. He has predestined us. So, it's not your present state that you are in, but the God has a purpose for your life and that purpose God is going to fulfill. Now, as, 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 as we have said it now, we, we have been talking about that I do not know what is the purpose of my life and I am good for nothing and so on and so forth. I would like to give you maybe if possible two or three, three examples from the word of God. I want to bring it to your notice. A one child who knew the purpose for his life. A one child who knew the purpose for his life. And that purpose was of his parents for his life. And that is none else, but it is a Samuel. Child Samuel. Samuel knew right from his childhood the purpose of his life was to serve the Lord in the house of God or in the temple of God. And that purpose was not his purpose, but that purpose was purposed in uh, by his mother and so by uh, his father. So that was the purpose of the, his parents for his life to serve the Lord in the temple of God. And Samuel knew it right from the childhood and he grew up knowing that he is called to serve the Lord in the house of God. Hallelujah. So there are some of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Perhaps it may be your parents' purpose for your life that you must serve the Lord in the house of God. Not from where you are, not from uh, far away, not as it is convenient to you, but God, your parents' have purpose in their hearts and their, their that, that was that's what was their commitment to the Lord. That you will serve the Lord in the house of God all the days of your life. Samuel knew it and Samuel submitted his will, his life for the purpose of his parents to serve the Lord in the house of God. What an amazing child he is. He was. My dear brothers and sisters, and you and I, we know it very well and it was worth it was worth, it was far, far best for Samuel because he yielded to the purpose of his parents for his life to serve the Lord in the house of the Lord. And as we know that, out of him, thus great prophet Samuel was raised by Almighty God. Hallelujah. The great prophet came through prophet Samuel and he became the great prophet. And he's the man who had an honor to anoint the king, first king of Israel, second king of Israel, that first king Samuel, uh, Saul, second king David, he anointed them. Hallelujah. What a great honor that he received from the Lord and even from the public as well. Now, when we just see about the, his mother prayed and asked the Lord, for 
the baby boy. She was so specific. She asked the Lord for the baby boy. And if you give me a baby boy, I will give him to you in the rest of his life to serve you. That what was her promise to the Lord. And accordingly, she prayed and asked the Lord. She cried before the Lord. And the Lord had answered her prayer. And once the boy grew up to the, when he was weaned off, then she brings him into the temple and he gives hand, hands over him into the hands of Eli. Now, coming back a little bit, my dear brothers and sisters. Now here, if you just see the situation at that time, the prophet of God or man of God, the servant of God in the temple of God or the tabernacle of God was an Eli at that time. And Eli, at that time, he was an old man. Eli was an old man and he had two sons. Now this Eli and his sons, his sons were, they were bad, bad boys, they were pervert and they were, they were messing up with everything. They were serving the Lord, but they were messing up in each and everything. They were misbehaving with the women that they came into the temple to worship even with the sacrifices they were messing up before it was offered unto the Lord they used to take it you know, flesh or meat from there so those kind of, all kind of those stuffs they were doing it and his and their father they, he could not discipline them he could not discipline them for a matter of fact Eli was the one who was disciplining the entire Israel he was maintaining and teaching them the ways of the Lord. He was teaching everyone, others, but he failed to teach to his children. He was a good prophet, good man of God, but he was not a good father. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, those who are listening to me, some of you as a parent, you have been good with others, you have been good for service of the Lord, but you are not you are not good as a father or as a mother or as a parent. Eli neglected. Eli did not give heed. Eli did not concentrate on upbringing of their sons. And when they grew old and when the things, the reports they came to him and when he tried to correct them, it was too late. There is a time to discipline, there is a time to correct, there is a time to give the discipline to the children. If you miss at that time, then it is gone beyond your control. But there are some things that there. We you discipline very well and they grow up in a discipline. But later when they grow up, when they mess up, they, it's not in your hand. But as, as, much, as long as they were under your control, as long as they were children, small, young ones, and you have disciplined, then fine. Praise God. But that is what is your and my responsibility as a parent to bring them up in the knowledge of the word of God and the discipline of the word of God. Afterwards, what they do is up to them. But as they are tender and as a growing age, that's what is our responsibility. Now here, what happened with Eli? When they were tender and young, Eli did not uh, discipline them. And when they were old, that time they start, he started correcting them. That, that time he started disciplining them. But then it was too late. Now, the situation was such that God was not willing for these sons of Eli to carry forward the work of a Eli. So God was looking for someone he wanted to replace Eli. God wanted to replace Eli. And while God is thinking of replacing Eli, there comes a couple and that is a <coughs> Elikana. He comes. They come with a prayer are requesting and pleading for a child. Requesting and pleading for a child. 
and then so it is either way they were looking they were asking for a child and god was looking for parents who will really bring up a child which will be the prophet forthcoming prophet and that is how samuel was born to <coughs> elkana and hana so it's a very important lesson to the parents that discipline your children when while they are young when the time goes you cannot be so it is good to be a good parents if i have to take another example david was a good man of god good king good warrior good all those things were there but he was a bad he was not a good father he was not a good father because he children you and i we know it what what all things they he children they have done it now one important thing i yet another thing i just would like to bring to your notice now the <clears throat> eli uh, elkana and hana they brought the child and they dedicated and they handed over to the <clears throat> eli and eli now he becomes his master uh, samuel's master and he starts mentoring him now here what do we just say for example for you and you and me we don't have pro, uh, 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 prophets but now today for you and me we have pastors we have elders now we as a children of god as a believers as the um, disciples we are being mentored by the holy spirit in and through pastors in and through the elders in the church now the purpose of your heavenly father for your life has to be fulfilled but you do not know what is the purpose of your heavenly father for your life <clears throat> but you are handed over to the pastor you are <clears throat> you are under the care of the pastor and the elder of a church now here very important thing whatever task is given to you by your pastor or by your elders you need to do it honestly and faithfully whatever was given to samuel he was doing it very faithfully and honestly um, precisely whatever was instructed to him he was doing very precisely and very well as it was told to him and as it was told to him he has done everything and and every time samuel knew it in his heart and in his mind my purpose of being in the house of god or in the temple of god to serve the lord because that is the purpose of my life which is decided by my parents so he lived up to the mark up to the expectation of his parents and up to the expectation of his master the eli the man of god so so it's very important my dear brothers and sisters you and i you and i we need to be to live up to the mark and to the expectation of our leaders of our pastor our uh, our spiritual father and the elders in the church we need to whatever the task is given to you and me we need to do it faithfully and honestly faithfully and honestly and the day will come the lord is going to exalt the day is going to come when he is going to lift you and me up <clears throat> beyond your and my expectation or beyond your and my dream i want to give it yet another example and we, we will have an example of king david now king david <clears throat> as we know it right from his childhood he is the eighth child eighth son of a jesse and this boy was engaged in the family and father has given him a responsibility to take care of the few sheep whatever the sheep they had and it was given his that was his responsibility to take care of them to tend them to take care of them and father gave him the responsibility and this young boy was taking care of sheep of his father so honestly so faithfully and he continued his work now it is very important 
my dear brothers and sisters now here david knew the purpose of his worldly father for his life was to tend the sheep of his father to take care of the sheep of his father now that's what was the assignment given to him that what was was the purpose of his life for his worldly father and he knew it and he was doing it honestly and faithfully now as we know it very well even sir uh, to the extreme david was as, almost as, as good as he was neglected child from the uh, family he was not considered in anything as if he's, he was not counted even as an as an a family member why do i say this because as we know it when samuel came to offer a sacrifice and he said specifically to jesse jesse come with all your sons for a sacrifice come with all your sons for a sacrifice and uh, unless you come with all your sons we will not offer sacrifice and in spite of such a strong and specific instruction what does jesse do he did not bring david he doesn't even bother he doesn't even uh, realize he doesn't even think of david to get him for the sacrifice so he brought a rest of his all his seven sons out of them four of them were in the army of so he brings all of them but he did not bring david so that means you, you and i know it very well that means he did not even consider him one among his son so and david also knew it very well that i have no recognition in the family i am as, as if i am not a member of the family i am just like a servant just like an um, just like a not in a family member i am like outside he knew it very well but yet he was so faithful so honest so trustworthy so hard working in given assignment he was doing exactly the purpose of his father for his life he knew the purpose of his life his father's purpose for his life his only father's purpose for his life but he didn't know the purpose of his heavenly father for his life he didn't know that and he did not concern he did not bother he didn't he didn't give thought to it but he knew one thing he has to fulfill the purpose of his holy father so he was doing so faithfully and honestly and as we know it very well that twice what happened once the lion came and attacked the sheep and then he goes behind and he um, tears the lion apart then the were bear attacks and then he goes and then he rescues that sheep from the mouth of a bear and we know this story very well now here what we know that he risked his life for a just small lamb how many sheep were there if one could have taken no problem why he has he, he has to risk his life but david did not bother did not consider his life in front of the sheep he he gave so much of importance to the, that little lamb or little sheep so much so even he did not more than his own life he was ready to lay, lay down his life and she goes and he rescues the sheep or the lamb from the mouth of lion and the mouth of bear now when david has done such a great thing but even his parents we don't come across his parents or his brothers they appreciated him they applauded or they have just uh, complimented him nothing but that did not discourage david and he continued his work faithfully and honestly and one fine day as we he was fulfilling his worldly father's purpose for his life his heavenly father picked him up from that purpose and he made him the king over israel look at it what a transformation what a we are looking at a david but david was unaware of his heavenly father and his purpose for his life but he was aware of his holy father and his purpose for his life but whatever the, his holy father's purpose was for his life he knew it and he he lived up to it in spite of all those despite all these discriminations and all those things that there but yet he remained faithful he honest and he fulfilled the purpose what was given to him by his holy father and one fine day the his heavenly father picked him up from behind the sheep and he put him as a king over israel my dear brothers and sisters same god the same 
God of David is your God and my God. David served the same God that God, you and I, we are serving that same God. You and I may be neglected. You and I may not be recognized or acknowledged or uh, complimented by perhaps it may be your parents, perhaps it may be your pastor or maybe elder. But I tell you, my brothers and sisters, as if I if I have to give an example from a church, whatever the responsibility your um, spiritual father, well, your spiritual father has given, the pastor has given, or elder has given a responsibility, fulfill that responsibility to the best of your ability. You will go out of your way, no matter what come in, you face that situation, but take care, do that responsibility honestly, faithfully, and your heavenly father. You will never miss from the sight of your heavenly father. Because he has sent you for the same purpose. That you will be faithful and honest. That you will be sir. You will be hardworking. You will be trustworthy in the given responsibility in the church, in the house of God. So that one day he will pick you up from that place and put you beyond your imagination. What happened? With the King David, he was picked up from behind the sheep and he was put before the before the kingdom Israel kingdom Israel and he became the king and that's what was the purpose of his heavenly father for his life my dear brothers and sisters Samuel also didn't know his heavenly father's purpose for his life he knew his worldly father's and spiritual father's purpose for his life to serve in the house of the Lord. He served in the house of the Lord day and night, faithfully and honestly. He did it and his heavenly father picked him up and made him a prophet over Israel. What same thing happened? What happened with the King David? What happened with the David? Uh, boy David. He was given an assignment <clears throat> he was given a responsibility. He was doing it faithfully, honestly, tirelessly, working very hard, honestly, faithfully. And his heavenly father picked him up and made him a king over Israel. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, perhaps, and as I said it earlier in the introduction, you may be thinking that your life has no purpose. Your life has no purpose. Perhaps you may be thinking, that I, in this church, my pastor or my elder, they give me the uh, least and the worst kind of job, uh, less kind, uh, <clears throat> worst kind of responsibility, and that nobody wants to do it. That's such a kind of job. Look at look at my status. Look at my education, uh, educational background, my uh, status, and all those things. But that doesn't suit. That that doesn't fit to my status. And such a kind of job they have given to me. How can I do it? I tell you, my brothers and my sisters. In the house of God, whatever is given, whatever responsibility is given to you by your spiritual father, do it honestly and faithfully. Forgetting your status, forgetting your uh, 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 your capabilities, your abilities, whatever it might be, forgetting all those things. Do it honestly and faithfully. Whatever responsibility, whatever task is given to you, do it faithfully and honestly. Without grumbling, without murmuring. And I guarantee you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Atanasi, one fine day, you will be just picked up. Just in a twinkling of eye. Just you will be picked up from there. And you will be blessed beyond your imagination. Beyond your imagination and beyond your wildest dream also. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you. Don't live a life without a purposeless life. Don't think your life is a purposeless life. Your life has got a purpose. I hear a heavenly father has got a purpose for your life. And with that very purpose, he has sent you on this you know, on this face of the earth at this time such as this. So be rest assured. Be sure. Be, be confident that I have a purpose for my life. My heavenly father has got a purpose for my life. 
Perhaps I may not have purpose. Perhaps my worldly father may not have purpose. Perhaps my, my spiritual father may not have purpose for my life. Mm, and they just uh, abuse me or whatever it might be. But be honest and faithful with them. Be honest and faithful with them as a child of God. They will not honor you. They will not recognize you. They will not acknowledge you. They will not compliment you. They will not mm, applaud you. But I tell you in the name of Jesus Christ. Abner, what happened with the um, Samuel? What happened with the David? Same thing is going to happen with you and me. If we remain faithful and honest as these people remain faithful and honest. Remain faithful and honest to your parents, to your spiritual father in your church, with your, with your elders, with the pastor. Remain faithful and honest. Do the responsibility what is given to you. And I guarantee you, same thing will happen. What happened with the David and what happened with the Samuel. And with quickly, another third example, I will just look at it and then we will close it. And the third example that I want to give about the Moses. And we know it, the story about the Moses. Moses was a Hebrew child. When King Herod said that no male child should be survived of a Hebrew that should be killed at the time of a delivery only, that time only it should be killed. But Moses has a purpose upon his life by the God Almighty. He was sent in the world to rescue and deliver his people, the Jews, to, to deliver Jews. He was sent with a purpose. Moses didn't know about it, neither his parents they knew about it, but he was sent with a purpose by his heavenly father. And we know it. He grew up in the house of enemy, in the Pharaoh's house. He grew up as a son of a father, Pharaoh's daughter, like a grandson of a Pharaoh. He grew up at the, till the age of 40. He grew up in the palace with all the tactics and all the education, everything he, it was done as if he was a son of a Pharaoh, as, a, as an Egyptian. But when he was old of age, <clears throat> 40, he came to know, by then he came to know that he is not a Egyptian, but he is a Jew, he is a Hebrew. And then he wanted to help his people. Then he thought that he will help his people. And then he started helping on his own, with his own ability, with his own <clears throat> wisdom and knowledge. This is very, very important, very vital lesson for you and me, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. That Moses took things in his hand. I, I'm not sure whether you really Moses realized that God has sent him to rescue Jews or Hebrews from the hand of a bondage of a um, Farwa. I do not know whether he was really, he knew about it, but he wanted to help the, his people. And he, as we know it, he killed one Egyptian when he was fighting and he was beating the Hebrew. And then he ran away and we know the story. So now here, one wrong move. Now, if we take it granted that Moses knew that he is the one who is going to deliver his people from the hand of a Pharaoh, from the bondage of a Pharaoh. And then he started helping his people, started rescuing. So one wrong move of Moses, my dear brothers and sisters, hear me carefully. One wrong move of a man with a man who had a purpose from the Lord, one wrong move has moved, has postponed or delayed the rescue or deliverance of a Jews for 40 long years. One wrong move of a call and a man who had a purpose over his head of the Almighty God. He took one wrong move and the deliverance of the, his people was delayed or postponed by 40 long years. That happened with the people. What happened with him, the man who, who had a purpose of God for his life? He was, he went away from the purpose of God for 40 long years. Knowing that he is called to rescue his people, but just because of his one wrong move, he was delayed or postponed for 40 long years. So also, it's a lesson for you and me, my brothers and my sisters. 
now as the scripture says and we know it about the scripture i am called i am chosen before the foundation of the world and, and then we try to take the things in our hand and act before the time before the appointed time before god tells you to go before the god commands uh, uh, commissions you to go if you take an action it would be a wrong move like a moses and the purpose of god or the plan of god for the purpose that is in it might delay we do not know how long it was delayed for moses and for the israelites for 40 long years i do not know how long it will be delayed for you and me and for the purpose that god is going to accomplish in and through you and me so that gives us a lesson that gives us a warning that you and i need to be very very careful we should not take the situation in our hand just because scripture says that oh i am called i am chosen and i have to go and i have to do this and i have to do that no unless god commands you unless god tells you to intervene unless god tells you to go ahead you should not go ahead that's the reason when he jesus guys appointed his disciples and he said to them he gave them the authority and power and he said before his ascension he said that wait in jerusalem till you are been endowed with the power my father's promise is be uh, unless it is fulfilled that you will be anointed with the holy spirit wait in jerusalem wait in jerusalem those they were given earlier when my jesus christ was on the face of the earth when he called them he gave them the authority he gave them the power and he told them to go and preach the gospel but at the time before his crucifixion he said i'll be going ah but i will send you the another comforter the promise of my father i'll send it to you you wait for that in a jerusalem my dear brothers and sisters they waited and once they were anointed on the day of pentecost they were anointed with the holy spirit they were filled with the holy spirit and then we see the revival and then the the breakthrough and the way that they have the all those twelve disciples have worked so and so my dear brothers and sisters don't hurry and take the situation before the time in your hand and start acting but wait for the time of the lord and the anointing and the commission by the lord then only go ahead so today my dear brothers and sisters as a children of god beloved children of god today the lord is speaking to you and me perhaps you lived up to now just thinking that my life is for purpose is like there is no purpose for my life i have no talents i can't do i have, I have no talents i have nothing i have that i can serve the lord on top of that i have messed up my life i messed up in everything but today is the word of the lord for you and for me god has a purpose for your life each and every one of us we have a purpose of god for your and my life if we remain faithful and honest the responsibility which is given to you and me by our holy father spiritual father follow that faithfully and honestly and the day comes your heavenly father will pick you up from that place and put you to the place for his purpose what he is going to accomplish in and through you so wait for that day and remain humble and simple under the hand of your spiritual father spiritual parents and the holy parents and the lord will honor that and one fine day he will pick you up and as samuel was picked up and he was made a prophet as david was picked up from the um, shepherd boy and he was made as a king and moses going behind the sheep into the wilderness he was picked up he was brought up from there and he the purpose of his life was fulfilled there after may god give you and me that grace that we will hereafter we will not live the life of purposeless life but we will live the life of a purpose waiting and expecting the day hand of the lord which will pick you up
waiting for that day. But till then, while you are waiting, remain humble and submissive to your spiritual and worthy father. And the Lord is going to exalt you. Shall we close our eyes? Glory to you, Holy Father. We just want to give you glory, honor, power, and praise to Holy Name. Thank you, Master God, for speaking to us, Master God. Especially, I pray, Master God, those who were living a purposeless life up to now, Master God. You have spoken to every one of us, and especially to those who thought that there is no purpose for their lives, Master God. You have spoken to them, O Lord, very specially, very vividly, very clearly, and Lord. As you have given us the counsel of Masgar to remain humble and obedient and submissive to spiritual father and the parents, honest, faithful, and you will pick them up. So, so Masgar, give grace, give us the grace, Masgar, that we may remain humble and simple, we may remain faithful and honest to the responsibility or the purpose that our worldly parents and our worldly spiritual parents have given to us to us, God. That we may remain faithful and honest to us, God, and hardworking, Lord. Waiting and expecting that one fine day you will pick us up and your purpose will be done in and through our lives, Master. Thank you, Master. Especially, Master. I pray, Master. Those my brothers and those my sisters, Maskat. In a confused state to Maskat. I bind the spirit to Maskat, the spirit of confusion to Maskat, the spirit of discouragement to Maskat. I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nare. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nare. And I release peace that passeth all understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nare. And so shall we. And Lord, let him be glorified, O Lord. Thank you, Lord Maskat. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your purpose for all of us. Let him be glorified. Giving you glory, honor, power, and praise to the holy name. In Jesus' precious name, I pray, O Lord. Amen. 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 And now, with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.